So before I learned Spanish, for some reason when I was around people speaking other languages, I don't know why, it's completely illogical, but at times, selfishly, I assumed that people might have been talking about me or that I was a topic of conversation for someone that, speaking, that was speaking another language. This is again before I um, learned Spanish. As a result of me speaking Spanish now, I've taken advantage of the fact that I understand Spanish fluently to eavesdrop a little bit on other people's conversations when I'm out in public and I hear Spanish being spoken. And to be honest, guys, for the most part, when I hear Spanish speakers speaking, in about 95% of the cases, they're not, speak they're not talking about anything profound. They're literally talking about what socks to buy. They're speaking about basic things that we would speak about on the phone in public. They're pretty much talking about normal things. But, but, and this is a big but, in those, in that other 5%, during that other 5%, a time in which they're not speaking about regular things, I have heard some crazy things. Now, I think in this video I have three things, and of those three, two of them, this, two of them will be kind of wild. One is just like funny to, to, to have heard this, and I heard this thing in Peru. And so in this video, I wanted to talk to you all about that. I'm gen, gen, genuinely a nosy person, if given the opportunity to be. Like, if you're going to say, say something loud enough for me to hear, I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to listen. I'm going to act like I'm not, but I will listen. And so in this video, I just wanted to share some of those crazy instances where someone assumed that I did not speak Spanish, so they felt comfortable saying things around me, and I picked out what they were saying, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I cannot believe you're saying this in public. Like, you really should keep in mind that even though you perceive someone to not be a speaker of your language, you don't know. Before I actually get into these things, I want to mention that I don't think that my thought process before I started, um, before I learned Spanish of, like, pe maybe people are talking about me or they, I might be the topic of conversation when I, when I used to hear other languages. I don't think that's completely unfounded or illogical for most people that are monolingual. I think that's monolingual, I think that's the phrase for that. Because I remember a couple of days ago, I was at Stone Mountain here in Metro Atlanta and a family, I'm, bas I'm basing my assumption of where they're from based on their accent, but I think a, a Guatemalan family was up there speaking completely in Spanish and they asked a, um, another family to take a picture for them. And after they took the picture, when they got the picture back, like when the, the woman handed the family back their phone and they looked at it, they looked at it for a second, they didn't say anything, and then when the other family walked off, they started laughing. And I could see on the um, family's face, the English-speaking family's face, I could see on their face, it was like, are they laughing at us? Like, did we take a bad picture? Did we do something wrong? When really, when I heard the, the Guatemalans speaking, they were just like, you have a big stomach, like you look ch chunky, you look a little gordito, you know? So. Um, I just want to say that first. I also, I know I've said it already, but I want to emphasize 95 to 99% of the time when I hear Spanish speakers speaking out in public, they're not saying anything crazy, okay? I just need to emphasize that. So I don't want you to think, oh, when I get to a level of speaking Spanish or understanding Spanish that's really high, I'm gonna be hearing all these crazy things. Again, I've been speaking Spanish for three years and I think I only have three to four things for you. I think I might've said two to three. I think I have a couple more that I could share with you. So let's get into them. So this first story happened about a year and a half ago. I heard this about a year and a half ago. I was at a Marshalls near Norcross, in Norcross. If anybody has lived in Atlanta or visited Atlanta or knows anything about Atlanta, you know the demographics of Norcross would lend themselves well to me hearing Spanish when I'm there. So I was there, I was in a Marshalls, and I overheard a woman speaking on the phone, and I heard the word, the words, pues, él me está engañando. Él me está engañando. That means he is cheating on me. So when I heard that, I made my way to the little aisle that she was on and acted like I was, because again, guys, you have to remember at this point, this was still fun for me to try to decipher what people are saying right now. I wouldn't do this. But at the time I was like, let me decipher what she's saying. And so I get near her and this lady is on a rage filled rampage speaking on the phone with, I don't know, her mom, her cousin, her sister about her, su marido, su pareja, her partner, her um, husband, boyfriend, whatever, about how he, él está andando por toda la ciudad, engañándome con cualquier, cualquier mujer, o sea, she's saying that he's going around the city, cheating on her with all these different women, 
she's saying that um, I don't I have to be careful guys because my students watch my videos so I can't say exactly what she said like I can't because my students that speak Spanish watch my videos their families as well but long story short she was very explicit in terms of what he was doing videos that she saw on his phone um, messages that she saw and she's describing all of this on a phone call in the middle of a marshals granted she she was looking around you know there wasn't there wasn't anybody super close to us but i was close to her and again she assumed that i did not understand spanish and so she felt comfortable speaking that way i'm gonna make a point here what i do in any of these instances and i do this outside of instances where people are speaking saying things that they shouldn't be in public i make a point anytime i hear someone speaking spanish I make a point to speak to them in Spanish, to ask them a question about their country, to do anything. Because I want people to get out of the habit of thinking, I don't want what happened to this lady. Not that it's a big deal, right? But I want people to be aware that like people have learned your language. Your language is a very common language to learn. So there are people around you that learn it. And so you want to be careful saying, talking about how your husband se mete con todas. Okay? And again, I'm not going to be super explicit in this video, but you guys get the point. That's the first crazy story. This woman literally detailing, um, again, I have to be careful, guys, but detailing specifics, logistics. I'm speaking in semantics here, right? Um, yeah, I, I can't go any further than that, but you guys get the point. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's the first interesting, crazy, funny story that I've heard eavesdropping as a result of me speaking and understanding Spanish. So this next story is probably the craziest thing that I've ever heard. And I'm not going to be specific here because I don't even like to repeat this kind of stuff. Uh, I, kind of, I kind of find this to be a sign of idiocy, to be honest. But um, ironically, this wasn't a Marshalls, though. This was a Ross, okay? Um, I was, in, I'm gonna, those of you that are in Atlanta, you'll understand some of these areas. I was at a Ross. Where was I at? Was that in Morrow? I think I was at a Ross in Morrow, okay? And as I'm walking into the Ross to get a gift for somebody for their birthday, I remember this explicitly. This happened not no more than three months ago. As I'm walking into the Ross, I see two guys. I cannot pinpoint their, their um, accent, like I couldn't guess what country they're from based on their accent. It was obviously Central America, but I couldn't guess the specific country. They weren't using anything that would have indicated where they were from. Long story short though, Guys, I hear these two guys. Number one, están de mal, estaban de mal humor. Like they were in a very bad mood. I could feel it. Like you can feel people's energy sometimes. And they were in a very bad mood, extremely bad mood. And they were, entre ellos dos, se estaban quejando de algo. They were complaining about something. Well, when I heard them speaking Spanish, I'm like, oh, opportunity to listen, right? Especially since it wasn't inconvenient to get near them. So I follow them into the marshals. They actually held the door open for me. But as they held the door open for me, going back to my point about people being so comfortable, assuming you don't speak their language, while I'm literally, one of them goes through the door, the other one holds the door for me, and I'm walking through them both, and they're speaking basically across me through the door about this, okay? I'm not going to say the racial or ethnic group, but, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get specific, but these guys were saying the most horrendous, negative, disrespectful, I'm going to be honest, racist things about a specific ethnic group, racial group, and a specific age range, and a specific gender. So they went through the gamut of like all the things that you don't do. You know what I mean? You don't, you know what I mean? You don't categorize people by those things, but they literally were spe specifying, yeah, people of this race that are this age that are this gender. They explicitly were saying like, yeah, not the men, no los hombres, pero, or it could have been women. I'm not gonna give it any, I'm not gonna give away who they're talking about, but they were talking about specific gender of a specific race within a specific age range. And they were describing this ethnic group in a way that I was like, I've never heard someone be that just nasty. Like, especially when it's unfounded because it's not even, Number one, I don't think like that. Like I think about people in terms of individuals. So that thought process alone to me was just disgusting. But then the fact that they both were agreeing on this specific demographic of people group, if that's a way you can describe that, and saying such negative things, cosas despectativas, I was like, oh my gosh, these dudes, I understand why I felt such negative energy passing by them because they were just super negative, super disrespectful and just out of line. I can't go specifically and use the insults that they were using here because obviously they're racist, they're sexist, 
um, they're ageist, if that's a thing. And I'm not even that type of person, guys. I'm really not. I'm not like that super sensitive and like, oh, if you make a joke, like it's a bad deal. I'm not that person. I'm really not. I can't. I, I understand the line, but these people were, they were going in. Like they were saying things that if, if recorded, they might, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if, th if these things were recorded and translated to English, it possibly could have been grounds for, like they would have been suspected of possibly in the future carrying out a hate crime against this specific ethnic group, racial group, and the specific gender that they were talking about. And so, again, I must emphasize here, right? Because I hate when people speak about entire groups of people like these people think this way and these people think that way. That's dumb. That's dumb. Okay, that is dumb. If you think that, if you think that way, I'm telling you right now, that's dumb. It is, and it shows me that you don't have experience with a lot of people. You don't have experience interacting with people of different backgrounds, but. Either way, um, so I want to say really quick, I'm getting distracted by the airplane and it's actually making me upset. Hopefully you see the cadence in my voice has increased. That airplane and me thinking about this is, is getting me a little um, upset a little bit and I'm normally pretty chill. Just thinking back to what they were saying, I was like, that's disgusting, man. But um, my point is, um, I don't want you all to use that to castigate anybody, right? These are two individuals that we don't know could be dumb like they could be clinically stupid we don't know you know what i mean or they could have just had a bad experience and they were overly emotional i'm not trying to justify saying stupid things like that i'm just saying i don't want you all to extrapolate that to an entire group you know what i mean oh my gosh what the heck oh my gosh so the third thing for me was more than anything it was just shocking it was just shocking um it's funny to think about so when i was in arequipa peru the i want to say like the third day we were there my brother he um, works in corporate America, so he had some work to do at home or at the apartment that we were airbnb -ing. And then my, um, my friend Sophia works for IBM International, and so she had to work that day as well. And so long story short, that's one day that I took for myself, and I went out and explored the city. And I remember I went to a mirador, um, which is like a lookout point where you could look at, look at the entire city, look out over the entire city. And I overheard a lady that if I had to guess... This lady was maybe, <laughs> I can't guess age as well, but she had to be in her, at the youngest 50s, at the oldest 70s. And she was sitting on a bench with her and her friend. And I walked past and I had my camera and I was recording everything. And so the first thing I overheard was the, uh, the older lady in, in question here, asking her friend, like, how old do you think that guy is? How old do you think he is? Da, da, da. So again, with me being such a nosy person, once I realized that I was the topic of their conversation, Oh, well, then I act like I'm taking photos near them so that I can overhear what they continue, what they continue to say. And so first she asked her friend, ¿Cuántos años piensa que él tiene? She asks her friend, how old do you think I am? And guys, let me say this. I have no problem, me personally, with um, people can do whatever they want. They can like whatever they want. Let me put that out there, okay? It just was shocking because it was like a... I don't know how to describe it. It was just shocking. Okay. So, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. So the lady asks how old she thinks I am to her friend. And then I hear this. Pues, un, un morenito muy guapo, no? Okay. I'm not going to translate this stuff. If you don't understand Spanish, do some homework and learn what I'm saying. He's like, un morenito muy guapo, no? And I'm like, no, oh, why thank you? Pues gracias. No lady. Hey, I didn't tell her anything. In my head, I'm just like, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Sí, ese negrito es muy guapo, muy guapo, muy simpático, dicen ahí, ahí en Perú. They say like simpático to describe that someone's a, uh, handsome, I guess. And so, again, in my head, I'm like, wow, that's nice, nice to hear. Thank you. I appreciate that. Not saying it out loud, but in my head. What I hear next is this, and I'm not going to repeat this in English. If you don't know what I'm saying, look it up. Oh, manita, usted no sabe lo que le haría. And I think me saying usted is because I'm so used to um, Colombian Spanish. What she probably said was, Manita, tú no sabes lo que le haría. But <laughs> in my head, I'm like, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? And again, no problem. No problem. I mean, I, she, I mean, that's fine. But in my head, I'm just like, what? Because imagine what I want you to imagine. And this doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying. It doesn't, I'm not saying her physical appearance has anything to do with it. But she was just like a very conservative, almost quiet, almost traditional um, Peruvian woman, like seemed like she was super quiet, just like, you know what I mean? Just like a little quiet little lady, right? But then she, she said that and I'm like, oh my gosh. And again, I think because at the time I was recording and speaking in English, she assumed, I could be wrong. She could have wanted me to hear what she was saying. But I think she, um, 
she didn't under she didn't think I understood what she was saying, or she may not have known that I could hear what she was saying between her friends. I think she just thought I was focused on what I was doing with my GoPro recording. But like I said, when I heard that, ooh, que, 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 que guapo es ese negrito, algo así, something like that. And then when I heard, tú no sabes lo que le haría, I was like, whoa. I mean, I, I took it as a compliment, like I appreciated it, but I was just like, okay, wow, wow. It is important to know, you know, to know what, what people are saying around you. Um, so yeah, those of you that understand Spanish and understand what I, stu- what I said, you'll get it. And again, I want to be very, um, as clean as possible here with everything I'm, that I'm going over. But yeah, it was very, uh, very interesting. So to close out this video, what I'd like for us to all do is to make a deal. And the deal is that all of us that are learning Spanish and learning any language for that matter, because I plan on doing this with other languages that I plan on learning. Swahili is not as common in Metro Atlanta, but either way, we have to make a deal that when you are out, if you're shy, if you're extroverted, if you're introverted, regardless, that we have to make a deal that we are going to make it be known that Spanish is being learned and spoken by plenty of non-native Spanish speakers across this country and across the globe. I know we have some European listeners and some Kenyan listeners and some South African listeners and some Australian listeners. If you have in a community of Spanish speakers, native Spanish speakers in your area, near you, anywhere, if you go anywhere and you hear it, let it be known that you understand what they're saying, that you want to practice speaking with them. Because again, they're for overwhelmingly, right? My experiences have been positive most times. Nobody says anything wrong. But in those few instances, I'm sure those people would have liked to have known that I knew everything that they were saying. I don't think they would have been as comfortable saying what they were saying if they knew that I understood what they were saying. And so let's make that deal not only for them, but for ourselves, right? I think me personally, I never was really in a big shell, but breaking out of my little small shell to practice speaking Spanish with people, I think it's helped a lot in, in, in this specific realm in terms of me practicing Spanish, but also in other aspects of my life. And so um, I think it's very helpful to, to do that, to do that. My neighbor is pulling up and is staring at me like, what are you doing, young man? So, um, yeah, I appreciate you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any similar situations. Overwhelmingly, what have you noticed? In your interactions when you overhear um, Spanish speakers speaking in public. Again, most times it's, it's nothing, but um, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I appreciate it. Please don't ask me in the comments what was said specifically. I can't get into it. Um, I just can't. I can't. All right, guys. Ciao. Les aprecio mucho. Ciao.